but I don't make it obvious that I'm using it, and I try to stay off of it, but right. If Cindy says, Mom, 911, please, yeah. some more uh, bulletins and oh, I know, it's terrible. It's <laughs> terrible. It's wonderful. So from the front of the bulletin, love barely bears all things. Looks like a Y. Sorry. <laughs> Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things from 1 Corinthians 13, 7. And now to the back of the bulletin. We have thank Emma for being our greeter. Donations for February will go to the Burlington County Animal Shelter. Altar flowers, both of them are lovely, given in glory of God. Dates to remember, read it. <laughs> okay, well. The, the main one that I'm interested in right now is the first couple. Uh, tomorrow, 
there will be a church council meeting. Anyone, everyone's invited. Uh, it'll be at 1.30 over at the Hargrove Hall. We haven't had a meeting in quite a while, and it's, we need to just pull things together. And then on Ash Wednesday, which is this Wednesday. Yes. Yeah, Lent's wow. here. Yeah. Uh, there will be a service at 7 p.m. at the Tabernacle United Methodist Church. And then on the 23rd, we will have our Bible study both in the morning and in the evening. 26, which is next Sunday, but I will mention that one too. Um, and I think that's really supposed to be 3.30. Yes. Uh, that's okay. Nobody told you to fix it either, right? You ask. We're going to talk it out. Okay, so um, <laughs> the Vincent Town Church is having a wow. potluck covered dish dinner at 3.30, not 4 o'clock. If you go before, you might miss out. So anyway. And then the rest of the services listed each week, well, not the following week, following Wednesday, we have our Lenten service here. Are we going to do refreshments? <coughs> um, well, that's entirely up to you. So Are I we mean, doing refreshments, ladies and gentlemen? Sure. Why not? Okay, we're doing refreshments, so we'll need to uh, discuss that. We'll make a list. Okay, we'll make a list. Okay, and the others as listed. Okay, we have, before we get to the birthdays, we have a couple other items. We have a meeting by the, for the SPRC immediately, immediately following worship service. Right here, right back there somewhere. 15 minutes, max. We're going we're gonna to time it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I've been told I have to cut my sermon short because of it. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah, right. We did get a, a note, uh, actually Linda got it, um, from Wildred saying just a little note to say hi and let you know that I think about our little country church a lot. I miss seeing my old friends and I wish everyone good health. I am doing fine and enjoying my old age. It is wonderful being here with the family daily. Watching my great granddaughter grow up is a pleasure. She keeps me on my toes. I always enjoy and appreciate company. So come on down, uh, have a good spring and enjoy the warmer weather. Blessings to all, Wilder. Okay. And then we have some birthdays. Hunter's gonna be 19. <laughs> Barbara Weatherwalks, and then Emma Jane is 25. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, page 349. 349.
Our call to worship can be found in your bulletin. The Lord is sovereign. Let the people tremble in awe. God is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and is high above all peoples. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship Yahweh upon the holy mountains. And our hymn of praise can be found on page 92 for the beauty of the earth. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 5, and 6 on page 92. Our opening prayer can be found also in our bulletin. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we your humble children invoke your blessings on us. We adore you, whose name is love, whose nature is compassion, whose presence is joy, whose word is truth. Whose spirit is goodness, whose holiness is beauty, whose will is peace, whose service is perfect freedom, and in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, unto you all honor and all glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I'd love to tell you so. page 819, Psalm 99. 819. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. The Lord sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion and is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and wondrous name. Holy is the Lord. Mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship at the Lord's footstool. Holy is the Lord. Moses and Aaron were among God's priests. Samuel was among those who called on God's name. They cried to the Lord who answered them, who spoke to them in a pillar of cloud. They kept God's testimonies and the statutes God gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoing. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. Surely the Lord our God is holy.
The epistle lesson for today comes from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 13. This can be found in the New Testament on page 175 in your pew Bible. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. May God bless the reading of his word. getting ready to do the hand signs. You should have. It's okay. Me included. But you included, absolutely. I know. I had to hold my hands down. Uh-oh. You got a rookie 
reputation, what can I tell you? It's a good reputation, but one anyway. Oops. <laughs> the gospel lesson for today comes from Matthew 17, verses 1 through 9. It can be found in the New Testament section on page 18 of your pew Bible. Please stand if you so wish. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If you will, please remain standing and turn in your hymnal to page 127 as we sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Okay, so for those on the email that turned around and said, I don't know the two middle hymns. <laughs> now you do. See? Well, once we heard them on YouTube, we oh, Okay, okay. So you cheated and went on YouTube. Well, That's I what you... I know you know these. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I know the tune. I don't know the 
Well, see, and, and, and so, okay, so I got to confess, on my email back, I turn around like, oh, 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 I know them, I know them. Here, I'll hum them for you. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of M's there. Okay. So yes. I, I figured that would help immensely. The only one that didn't get that email was me. Oh, you weren't on that one? <laughs> no, I wasn't. Oh, we got to make sure, we got to make sure we get you on that thread. Yeah, yeah. Well, so a married couple was walking through a garden when suddenly a dog ran towards them. They both knew they were going to get bit. The husband lifted his wife to let the dog bite him rather than his sweetheart. Oh. Oh. The dog stopped before them, unsure what to do, barked a little and ran away. The husband put his wife down, expecting a hug and a few kind words of gratitude from her. But his wife shouted, I've seen people throwing stones and sticks at dogs. This is the first time I see someone trying to throw his wife at a dog. <laughs> the moral of this story, no one else can misunderstand a husband better than a wife. <laughs> true? True that? True that. There you go. Okay. Um, aww, aww. It was an awe moment. Aww. Yes. So, um, okay. I apologize now, but, you know, because we had that nice warm weather, and then this morning, Reality came back a little bit. Uh, okay. It's still winter. But um, so many of us, when we get to go on a real vacation, uh, not have your hip replaced, have a pacemaker put in, no, a real vacation, right? Uh, Want to choose a, a, a relaxing atmosphere where it is very quiet. Many of you pick a shore resort where the salt air is better than a top-notch massage. Here's where I'm going to get everybody going, oh, warm weather is coming again, isn't it? You can hear the kids screaming while riding the amusements, the smell of french fries cooking and pizza baking, and the many ovens on the boardwalks. The sounds of the wheels of chance spinning and the thought of, yes, one of my favorites, a Coors Brothers ice cream oh, just conquers your psyche. Are you missing it yet? They draw a picture of it. Now, Patty and I find, find it somewhat relaxing walking on the boards, and yes, the ice cream beats me every time unless it's the sausage sandwich that they want to give me for free and I have been forced to pay for it. Um, Honesty. Honesty. Yeah, well. But, our, <laughs> but I had to bring that back up. I didn't want anyone to forget about that. But our most relaxing vacations we have gone on involves the mountains. We have a we have a love being throughout the South, in Virginia and Tennessee, seeing the mountain ranges. They're beautiful. We'd hike some of the trails without the proper footwear. Sorry, I thought it was a good idea. I know, I know. Uh, flip flops and sandals on a mountainous trail just. They said it was an easy mountain trail. Yeah, easy, easy, yeah, yeah. And, and we paid the price for the bad decision. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. And we still love each other, that's just great, you know. Um, we have both agreed, though, that the best relaxing trips we have taken was to Lincoln, New Hampshire, okay? What is in Lincoln, New Hampshire? Mount Washington. 
okay? Mount Washington, where no, we did not climb Mount Washington in our sandals and flip-flops. We took the train, yes. But as we drove around taking in the sights, we couldn't help but say how awesome our God is. This is the land, we, could, we, we described it. This is the land where God was creating the earth. He looked back and had to say that this is perfect, and walked away without touching his majestic scenery again. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The mountains, the luscious forests, and the leaping streams are so magnificent. They're hard to explain if you've never seen them. If you ever get the chance to go, take one of the moose tours. Talk about a magnificent they are massive and another beautiful creation of God. Those moose are awesome, you know? They really are. Now, in the gospel reading today, we heard the story of Jesus taking Peter, Andrew, and John up on the mountain. Now, Jesus used to go up on mountains to enjoy the peace and quiet. You see it throughout the Bible to be with his heavenly father, to pray. There he is up there, just as quiet and peaceful as can be. But this time was different. Jesus was transformed in front of them. His appearance was changed to brilliant white. They saw Moses and Elijah speaking together with Jesus, and they heard the voice of God coming out of the cloud. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Do as he says. Do as he says. So on the way back down, Jesus instructed them not to tell anyone of what they had witnessed until the Son of Man was, right, was risen from the dead. It must have been driving them crazy. Right? Having to keep that secret. How batty would it drive you if you had to keep a secret with that magnitude? I really think about it. We're all gossipers. Come on. You know, that secret wouldn't last more than two seconds when you got back down to your people. I don't care who told you that. I don't know if I would be able to or if I would fail that test miserably. Yeah, probably I would. Yeah. Although I have had people invoke pastor privilege and I've passed that test all right. Say, yes, I've had people tell me secrets. And that's where they stay, between us. Now, I wanted to share Peter's explanation of that glorious day and how he describes what he had witnessed. Again, although he speaks of it after the resurrection, just like Jesus had instructed. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have been eyewitnesses to his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no 
prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. That was Peter's eyewitness report of what happened that day. Now let us take a little trip. Well, first of all, it must have been something to do with the mountain, though. Got to give that mountain credit, right? Uh, throughout the Bible, God summons us to the mountain to speak to us. Through Jesus, God summoned Peter, Andrew, and John to the mountain to let them hear his voice. Now, let us take a trip in history uh, in Exodus, Moses was summoned up on the mountain. Okay? Not for a vacation, but to have a meeting with God. God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. Remember the story? Remember the story? The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders, he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the, God, of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain. In the sight of the people of Israel, Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so there's that time stamp again. 40 days and 40 nights. This appears in the Bible over 20 times. Over 20 times, 40 days and 40 nights appears in the Bible. We're just getting ready to start Lent, which lasts 40 days and 40 nights, without counting Sundays. Yeah, it doesn't count Sundays in that. Um, so getting back to the topic as, <laughs> as many times as we, Patty and I, have been to the mountains I even bought a t-shirt that says, the mountains are calling me and I must go. Yeah, right? We've never encountered a burning bush or a strange voice coming out of a cloud. I have, however, had God speak to me on a sort of mountain a hill overlooking the Hudson River. Now, I've told everybody that story, so I don't have to go into it anymore. But this is the reason why I'm your pastor today, I guess. I answered a calling from God through others, through others and their determination. Anyway, try a mountain vacation sometime. Listen to the babbling brook splash against the rocks. Listen to the birds singing and the gentle breeze blowing through your hair or over your bald head, whichever you got, whichever fits you. Those subtle little observations are God's way of speaking to us. 
if it's at the shore, the waves hitting the beach, and the cry of the gull, trying to get your french fries, but uh, the cry of the gull is God's way to communicate with us. Who knows? Maybe you'll be able to understand what it is he's trying to say and answer the call that fits you to do. Each one of us is called for something. It's never too late to answer that call. Amen. Yes. Sandals. I know. Well, she was trying to get me closer to God by 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 making my feet suffer. And Yep. Yeah. Easy. Oh, so you're trying to give her credit for that one. That's that's that that's good. That's good, Bobby. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the hallmark moment, the hallmark movie moment in my joke. And up on the mountains. Uh, hey, but you know, when we kissed up there, it didn't snow. Oh, boy. And Alan's over there saying the same thing. Oh, boy. <laughs> The Hallmark, yeah, Hallmark Channel. So, um, yeah, speaking of Hallmark Channel, yesterday I was on my Zoom for seminary class, and I turned around and looked, and the, 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 the sound was muted. But someone snuck in behind me and changed to a Hallmark Channel. Oh, what is wrong with this? Here I am doing God's work. And there's the Hallmark Channel playing behind me. No, it's just not right. It's just and not right. leaving you to do what you needed to do. Yes. Not bothering you. Yes. Yes. I couldn't go to another room. I got the computer. Well, I, it's a laptop. I could have, but, you know. Um, yes. Um, but uh, so it's one more class down. Three more to go. Hopefully, this time next year will be done. And then party. And then party. And burn all those books that I had to buy. No. But anyway. Um, I know. Yeah, movies and cards. They'll never run out. <laughs> well, let us go to our Lord in prayer on that majestic mountain. Um, glad to have Ralph back with us. Yes. We've missed you, and we're happy that you're here. Um, very happy. Yes, um, yes. Last last Sunday, one of the one of Patty's students, uh, their mother was killed, shot shot and killed in Trenton. Last Sunday, so yeah. So just prayers because he he tried to come back to school on Wednesday and he had a call to come get him. And she leaves a fourth grader and a three month old. Oh. oh. So it's just. Yeah, absolutely, just to keep the family in prayer. We also need to keep in prayer that, that, that Temple University police officer that was shot and killed last night. Mm -hmm. you know. Carol Ann. I read this morning, uh, sadly, of yet again another senseless shooting 
the 23-year-old woman shot a 26-year-old woman in the back after a verbal altercation. The 26-year-old woman's two-year-old and <coughs> two -year -old were in her car. None of us know why we seem to be producing so many angry people with a total loss of respect for human life. Yeah. I, I guess we all know the solution, but how do we convince so many angry people? They have to turn their hearts to God. Yes. So maybe we can try to nudge God to divert some of his attention to those angry people. Yeah. Yeah, get them the help and, 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 and calm them down. Uh, you know, it gets to the point where you, you, you know you hate to turn on the news because that's all you're seeing anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's just horrible. It's almost like the norm. Yeah, it's almost like the norm. Yep. And, and we've said it how many times? People chased God out of their lives. The only time they want God is when it's convenient for them. And that's not how God works. We just need him to start intervening a little bit heavier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a phrase. Okay. My cousin had a baby the night before last. Hmm. Yeah. Everything perfect on it, lying in that little bed. Yeah. We don't realize it sometimes of what a gift that is. They take it for granted. And, yep. and it really is. It, it's such a miracle that he does that. Yeah. And he gives us that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think people appreciate it as much as they really should. Even myself, until I look at that baby again, I just... Yeah, it, it, it's an eye-opener. Wakes you up. Absolutely. Even though I'm better, not, not better, but just being a grandmother, knowing that what you gave life to has given life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very nice feeling. Yeah. To see the generations forming. Yeah. And knowing that that family is considering God and going on and on. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? Yeah. First for my granddaughter, Julie. Yes. Painful. And poor Bob and Nellie, of course. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, uh, Nellie wasn't feeling too good. And, mm -hmm. and she, you know, so she didn't return phone calls and, and things like that. So everybody's worrying, but um, I'm sure she'll be. She's in God's hands, as we all are. Yeah. And they're probably, oh, they're probably watching us right now because their nephew um, figured out how to put our service on YouTube on their TV. So now they can sit there and see us in. Hi, Bob and Nellie. Hi, Bob and Nellie. There you are. See? See? So they can see us. Instead of on the phone, in large screen. Hey, there you go. That works. That works good. Hey, technology. You know, technology is great when it works. When it doesn't work, well. <laughs> is there anyone? Anyone? Yeah, Brooke. Oh. And then for them, making better choices, and then for the kids like Danny Boy, we try to we try to ask him. I said, did something happen in school with gummies? And he said, no, but I like gummy bears. And I'm like, you know, it's like there's 
Yeah. Who may not know. Yeah, exactly. And are in situations that I could see him just being like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Like, and not knowing the kids who bring them something because they're obviously exposed to yeah. things that, yeah. you know, that I think you really shouldn't be. So just for all of them. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the shameful thing is the, 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 state, the state that we live in making it legal. So, uh, I don't have gummies. I get cough drops. But. <laughs> we didn't want to tell Dave too much, but we tried to gauge where he was at. And it's just right. Like, I, didn't hear anything, but I do like gummy bears. And they're like, we're not talking about gummy bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's it's it, it's good to to draw you know here you eat the gummy bears we give you. We, I told him that I said you do not eat anything from anybody. Yeah. Except yeah. for the lunch ladies that you say thank you. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't eat anything from anybody else. But we know we've talked about the parents they exchange money on the bus and stuff. So. Yeah. It is. It's all money and greed. And, and it comes from the state, too, because now they can tax it. Yeah. You got something to worry about. It's the weirdest thing with kids coming there. It's like, there's a lot of kids like Danny who are very innocent. Sure, sure. And maybe we do try to shield him too much from certain things, but. You, you kind of have to. At the same time, like, they're coming there. There's yeah. going to be kids who just yeah. see them and don't think twice. And yeah. At, at his age, you kind of have to. You know? <laughs> they're too vulnerable. Too vulnerable. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're doing good so far. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Do we have have anyone else that Yeah, Trish. I know I keep repeating it, but please keep my coworker still in your prayers. Okay. Um, she's not as depressed now as she was last week, and she is feeling the prayers and support. Okay. But she says, I'm supposed to be coming back to work March 1st, which is. Yes. And she said, I'm not ready. Oh. So I said, okay. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. She still has not gotten vision back in the eye yet. So. Is it starting to return? It is but starting to return a little, okay. little by little, okay. but not to the degree that she needs it to be to be able to come back to work. Right, 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 right. And with the cataract in the other eye, so yeah, she's still battling. Okay, okay. So okay. I'm still where I am until she... I saw a couple more gray hairs there. I think the kids are. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was counting. Like better add a little more. Yeah. Other Lady Grecian or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clairol or yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only teasing. <laughs> Is there anyone else that? Yeah, Judy. Let him intervene and straighten him out. I hope so. Yep. I need it. Okay. Particularly one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Well then let's 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 bow our heads and, and, and go to our Lord. Oh ever loving God, as we think about your creation, think about vacations, think about places of relaxation. How majestic is your creation? You've created oceans where we can go, relax, listen to the sounds, enjoy the soft breezes. 
and you've created those majestic mountains that we look at, try to conquer, try to climb. We know, O oh God, that your creations are so beautiful. Let us be the ones to enjoy them and protect them. Protect them so that no one comes in and destroys. We are the caretakers of your world, of your creations. And please, oh God, give us the hands and the ability to be able to continue to protect and to beautify what you started so many years ago. We thank you, O oh God, for those beautiful creations and the enjoyment that we receive from them. Now, God, we ask you to be with the families who have experienced great loss. May they be comforted, consoled, keep them strong, heal their hearts, their broken hearts. And may they remember their loved ones in good ways. We ask you, O oh God, to come into our world strong-armed, strong-armed, to stop this violence to stop this unsen unsensible killings. God, you can change the hearts of these people. We can try because we are your voice, we are your hands, we are your feet. Give us the words to say to have them stop and to love one another just as you love us. God, we ask you to be with those who are battling depression and in fear of what is to come next? God, we know that you are in the driver's seat of our lives. And you are going to guide us. Yes, we're going to have trials and tribulations. But you still get us through them. And through your love and the love of those around them. We know that we can work together to get them safely through. Give us the strength. Give us the wisdom. And give us the hearts to be able to help. We thank you, O oh God, for the miracles of new birth as we see a world that sometimes is very ugly. Then we see a beautiful new baby that comes into this world. And it changes our hearts, it changes our minds, it changes our lives. Those that are grandparents get to see the families continue. They see how they gave birth and see the birth of another one continue the generations and God it gives us hope it gives us hope just like having the children in our church it gives us hope that we know that we will be able to see another day another day of life. And we ask you to be with Julie as 
She is experiencing a lot of pain from having her foot surgery. We thank you, oh God, that you brought her through. And we just ask you to comfort her, let the medications start to work where she won't be in that much severe pain any longer. We ask you to be with Bob and Nellie as Nellie is still not feeling well and Bob is worried sick. We just ask that you keep Bob strong, strong will, and cure Nellie so that they can come back and occupy their pew again. We miss them. But we're glad that they're able to tune in to see us. We ask you to be with the Southampton students and, and you know, students everywhere, everywhere that are running into issues of temptations. Protect these children, oh God. Protect them so that they don't have to be put in those hard decision places that they have to make. We thank you, oh God, for your healing of co-workers, although there's a long road still ahead, but you're returning her eyesight, and you've been keeping Trish strong as she's been continuing to help teach the children. So we thank you, God, for her ability to be able to step up and take the place of their teacher. But get their teacher well again so she can return back to the classroom where she longs to be. And then, God, we have families that we know of, that, that we that are in turmoil. There's decisions that have to be made. God, we just ask you to guide those families that are in this turmoil through to make the right decisions and to be to your glory, your will, O oh God, what their decisions would be. Now, God, as we prepare for Lent, we thank you for your son who guided us when he was here with us, guided us up onto the mountain, taught us and spoke to us. And one of the greatest lessons he gave us was how to pray to you. As he gave us these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, it is a pleasure to be able to go up onto the mountain with our Lord, and return to some of the treasures that he has given us as we overlook his glorious creation. So I'll ask our ushers if they will please come forward and assist us with today's tithes and offerings. Oh God, bless these gifts and bless the givers.
God, we lift these treasures high to you. May they be used to strengthen your kingdom, your majestic kingdom here on earth. May they be used to continue in your service. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and open your hymnals to 696. Uh, I think we all know this one. Well, I think so. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> service to others never ends. Go into the world, share his light, share his love, okay. and climb his mountains. Don't let anything stop you. Just make sure you have the right shoe attire. <laughs> may you do it with the grace and love of God the Father Almighty. Amen. 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 Amen.